A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Andrew Dodson has finally uploaded after 69 years. So it's my turn to upload something new today. And I have prepared for you, ladies and gentlemen, a rectangle. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. This has been flammable mess. By the way, this video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over on Brian. Make sure to check them out at the very end of the video. They're pretty cool. Should seriously check it out. Now, what are we going to do today? We are going to do one of the most beautiful visual proofs, at least in my opinion, that we have ever done here on this channel. We are going to prove the cauchy schwarz inequality today. And this in a visual manner using Le boy, simple le rectangle. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video. Now, cauchy schwarz inequality is uh, something that I have heard about first in my functional anal class. We were covering it and trying to generalize it to spectral spaces and the like. Just overall um, matrices with infinitely many dimensions and the like. And it was pure badass. Ness. Is that a word? Badassness? Never mind. Now, we are going to do it simply with vectors today, at least at the very end. And this one generalizes to a lot of other um, situations in mathematics. As my functional anal professor liked to say, it's pretty easy to prove the regular theorems, but <laughs> expanding them to higher and even infinitely many dimensions is extremely difficult and nerve-wracking. And he's right. So we are going to do the simple one today and I hope you are going to enjoy what we are going to do today. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to break up this very rectangle. And I have prepared something for you. That's not what I normally do, but here we go. I don't want to embarrass myself. So what we are going to do is... Um, we have a bunch of triangles here. Triangles are our friends. We are going to break up this rectangle right here into four rectangles overall. So it's going to be a tiny little bit crown breaking. So what you are going to do, let's stick the small ones up here. Um, and let's put those two triangles together to get ourselves a rectangle. And we are going to do the same spiel down here with the bigger one. And... It does fit, it seems. That's what she said. Okay, perfect. So this right here is now our um, big rectangle turned into four rectangles. And we are going to give the side lengths of those rectangles a bunch of names. I mean, they are de defined positive, those side lengths. So it doesn't hurt if we just take real numbers, but take the absolute value of those. So let us go ahead and get started. Um, just some ran random arbitrary um. No, notations that we are going to use right here. It's going to make more sense at the very end just for everything to be in order. We are going to call this side length down here at the value of x, this side length at the value of b, and this up here is the absolute value of a, and this right here is the absolute value of y. Now, just to be on the same page, what that means is that the smaller side length of this small rectangle up here is absolute value of a, and this right here is absolute value of B, uh, vice versa, I'm terribly sorry. And that's right here is absolute value of Y. And that's right here is absolute value of X. Now, why did we do something like this? Well, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and take a look at those empty rectangles right here. We want to take a look at the total area of those empty rectangles. I mean, it becomes very clear to get ourselves the area of those. We just need to get the area of this one and the area of this one. Now, the area of this smaller rectangle, I would say, or this square type of rectangle, is going to be the absolute value of a times the absolute value of x. So the area is going to be equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of x. And also the other way around, this right here is the absolute value of b times the absolute value of y. So let's go ahead and get started. This is what it looks like right now. And now we want to fumble around with this rectangle tie a little bit more. And this is why we have our self garden, those little triangular partitions, you could say. Let's shift stuff around a tiny little bit. We don't want to change much. Just keep in mind that by shifting around, we don't change the total area of either the wide space that we had here or the empty space. So let's put this up here. And then we are going to go ahead and take this one, put it here. and. We are going to take this one and we are going to put it here. Now you see that those in the normal case or in the just in the um, nice case, 
that we did everything accurately are gonna touch at the corners obviously because all of those side lengths are just gonna add together nicely to the original side lengths that we had on our rectangle but what you're going to notice now here is we are gonna end up with an empty space being comprised of a single parallelogram because those side lengths that we have on opposite sides are all equal length and they are parallel to one another just because um, trigonometry and mathematic now we are still interested in the area of this parallelogram and we are going to go into a bit more detail here and check out the side lengths of the parallelogram at first. Now what about this side length that we have down here which is the same as this side length that we have up here. Now this side length since this right here is the F survey of A once again is going to be the same as and now let me see for a second, we shifted stuff around. This right here was originally the absolute value of B. So please just keep this in mind because we had the absolute value of A up here. This was our original placement. And then the absolute value of B was the smaller side. Hence the notation that we had at first. Meaning the side length right here by Pythagoras is absolute value of A squared plus B squared. Not absolute value, but the square root. Okay. And you, maybe you see a pattern here if we go ahead and do the same thing. Now the side length of the longer part of the parallelogram is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, now those are the side lengths of our parallelogram. Let me draw it out a tiny little bit once again. That right here is our parallelogram. Longer side is square root x squared plus y squared. And the longer side is square root a squared plus b squared. Now, in order for us to get the area of our parallelogram, once again, which is the same as what we have up here, we need to play around with this parallelog parallelogram a tiny little bit. We are going to cut off, and that is a usual technique I use here on this channel and also at school. We are going to cut off this part of the parallelogram, giving us a height h. And if we were to glue exactly this part, to the side right here, we are going to end up with a rectangle of side lengths x squared plus y squared, but in square roots, which is the same up here, and the side length h. So meaning in order for us to get our assessed area, what we are going to do is we are going to multiply the square root of x squared plus y squared by the height. Now what is the height of this parallelogram now? We can use trigonometry here. Let's just say this right here is an angle phi. And then you can immediately see how we can calculate h in our case. Namely, we have that the sine of phi is the same as h divided by square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, by multiplying both sides by square root of a squared plus b squared, not equal to zero because both a and b are non-zero. They are positive side lengths. We are going to end up with the area being equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared times the square root of a squared plus b squared times the sine of phi. Now, those are both the area parts of our empty part of the rectangle. Now, we can set those equal because they are in fact equal, giving us the new equivalence relation that the absolute value of a times the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of b times the absolute value of y is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared times the square root of a squared plus b squared times sine of phi. And this is where the visual proof now ends because now we are already in the finest stretches of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Now, we are doing analysis here, the worst case function analysis. So doing all the relations and estimations is key. Now, the cool thing about the sign is that for real numbers, phi, this is bounded between 1 and negative 1. So, sine of phi is always less or equal to 1. Meaning, in the highest case possible, this equation on the right-hand side can be equal to the square root of blah, 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 times the square root of the other blah, blah, blah. In all the other cases, it's just smaller than that. So, by estimating the right-hand side, this right here is always less or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared times the square root of a squared plus b squared. Right side is done and we are right 
in our final stretches right here because now the only thing left is the left hand side to estimate. And now we're done with the Cauchy Schwarz inequality. Now the cool thing about absolute values is that they are multiplicative. This right here is the same as the absolute value of AX plus the absolute value of BY. Why is this exactly important? If you ever done analysis, you might have been strangled <laughs> by the hands of the triangle inequality. This right here is obviously the upper bound of the triangle inequality. Now, detours are always greater or equal than the direct path. This is what the triangle inequality basically says. So, this right here is the upper estimate to the triangle inequality, exactly as the first part plus the second part, but in absolute values. Now, this right here gives us a new order relationship, which is equivalent to the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. This right here is equivalent to saying we have the absolute value of ax plus by is less or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared times the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, you might see why I have used such random arbitrary emplacements of the absolute value of a, b, x, and y, because now everything is nicely in order. Under the square root, we have x and y. Under the square root, we have a and b. And also, the first letter of the alphabet is paired with the letter coming before y, namely x, and the other one too. Now, this, if we take a look at what we have right here, is nothing other than basically the length of a vector. Now let us define two vectors, v and w. Let the vector v be equal to xy and the vector w be equal to ab. Now, if we were to get ourselves the length of those vectors, basically the absolute value of those vectors, we are going to end up with either the square root of x squared plus y squared, or we are going to end up with the uh, square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, if we are in other dimensions or in other spaces, whatever, you might want to substitute the absolute value, so the length of a vector, for something more generalized, namely the norm in the vector space. So this right here is going to be the norm of our whatever structure we have right here for a more generalized version of the cauchy schwarz inequality. Now, what do we have here on the left-hand side? If you are a bit more familiar with linear algebra and also analytic geometry, you might notice that this right here is just a dot product of our vectors. Namely, if we were to take the vector v in the dot product with the vector w, we are going to end up with just the sum of the multiplication of the entries, but point-wise. So this right here is ax. Hmm plus by. Now taking this into absolute values is exactly the left hand side of our inequality. Now for a more generalized matter, you don't want to take the dot product all the time because for some structures it just doesn't exist in that kind of way. We are speaking more of the inner product in functional analysis. Now this right here is the same as the inner product of v and w. And this right here now gives us the cauchy schwarz inequality in a more generalized way, proven in a visual manner, namely that we have the absolute value of the inner product of our two vectors is less or equal to the norms of the vectors respectively. And as mentioned before, this right here is the cauchy schwarz inequality. I think that should check out. And you can be even more generalized. The norm is just the inner product, basically, um, of the vector and itself, but then taking the square root of that. <clears throat> so this is something that you can also do. Yeah, exactly. And this right here proves it. And I hope you did enjoy this visual proof. I really like it. And it's a really cool approach to proving something which is really hard to prove in a normal and also the general case overall. And if you are a sucker for visual proofs, if you want to dive more into the mathematics that we did here and other things in STEM, then the contents of today's sponsor brain might be the perfect fit for you. As mentioned at the very start, many things in mathematics are extremely hard to prove and you need to go ways to get yourselves a good understanding of what you do in the regular case when going through strictly mathematical and abstract proofs. But there are other ways you can approach something like this and this is where 
Print could be the perfect fit for you. Print is your source for some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. Be in the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, whatever it is you can think of in the STEM space. Print got something up their sleeve that can enhance your knowledge big time today, either on the go by using their app or at home using your computer. And their course concept might seem very simple at the surface, but there's a lot of things that really go into the learning experience over on Print. Let me explain it a tiny little bit. You normally start off with an introductory text into the topic. For example, analysis, taking a look at the triangle inequality. Then what they do is they basically immediately go ahead and show you some visuals. They don't throw a lot of abstract stuff at you from the get-go. No, they give you a nice slide into the topic. Just an easy slide into the topic that is going to make it easy for you to swallow what you're going to be up against in due time. Now for triangle inequality, it's easy. Maybe they show you a graphic with a street. You can either go over both traffic lights or maybe you can go the direct path. And this is a way to easily demonstrate that you can either do a detour, which is obviously longer than the direct path, which is equivalent to saying we have the triangle inequality in a more abstract space. But with this easy concept out of the way done, you can go ahead and generalize this even more for vector spaces, matrices and the like and so on. And this is just where Print really shines at. They take something seemingly simple give you a bunch of visuals that you can play around with, with your own two hands, and then you see yourself suddenly learning even more than you could possibly ever think of. It's seriously crazy. You should just check it out by using my link here at the top of the description, print.org slash Maths. With it, you are going to get a 30-day free trial of amazing awesomeness. Just try it out and see if it's something for you. And if it is, if you feel like this could turn into a long-term relationship between you and the services, then definitely make sure to use the link in its entirety and get 20% of an annual premium subscription. You can also use my QR code somewhere up here in the corner. It doesn't matter. No matter what you do, just check it out. See if it's something for you and if you can get a kick out of Brian and the services. And if you do so, then this would be an absolute bonkers support for the channel. So please check it out and support the channel this way massively. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. I was stuttering a tiny little bit today. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I was a little bit rusty after three weeks not putting out videos, but I wanted to get this one out because I really, really enjoyed this visual proof. And this actually was shown by our professor back then by uh, Matthias Keller at the University of Potsdam. He showed it to me back in the days and it was a really cool visualization of the cauchy schwarz inequality. I really liked it and I hope you did enjoy it too. And up until next video, I wish you guys a favorable day. See ya.